In this video we will take a look at the state notifier package and the flutter state notifier package. As a demonstration we will create a counter application. A simple example, but if you stick to the end of the video you will see all of the benefits that state notifier can provide as well as appreciate its simplicity. Please note that this video assumes you are familiar with provider and that you understand what a change notifier and value notifier is. If you are not familiar with provider and change notifier then I recommend you first watch my video on provider basics. Or you can take a look at the written tutorial for this video, which provides links to the relevant resources and the information you need. But as a quick summary, a value notifier is a change notifier that holds a single value. When the value is replaced with something that is not equal to the old value, this class notifies its listeners. Okay, so what is the state notifier package? State notifier re-implements value notifier outside of Flutter. To quote the documentation, extracting value notifier outside of Flutter in a separate package has two purposes. It allows Dart packages with no dependency on Flutter to use these classes and also solve some of the common problems when using change notifier and value notifier with provider. This second bullet is what we are really interested in, the bit that says the combination with provider. And this is where state notifier truly shines. And in addition to that, here are some other benefits of using state notifier instead of the original value notifier. A significant simplification of the integration of provider, simplified testing mocking, improved performance on add listener and notify listener equivalents, extra safety through small API changes. In this tutorial, we will also use the Flutter state notifier package, which add extra Flutter bindings to state notifier. This package is what allows us to integrate state notifier with provider and with our widgets. So with the summary out of the way, let's start the coding example. Okay, so let's begin with the code. At the moment, we just have the barebones UI and it does nothing at the moment. As you can see, plus just prints to do and minus just prints to do as well. And then I've already proceeded to add the necessary dependencies that we will use. So we will need to add a dependency for state notifier, flutter state notifier and provider. And then the first thing that we will do is we will add a new class called counter.dart and this class will um, extend state notifier. So extend state notifier. And for this, we would need to import the state notifier package. And we need to supply the type uh, for the state notifier. So this will be essentially the state. And uh, if we take a look at the state notifier class, you can see that in the uh, constructor, we pass in this.state and the state is of type T. And this state, whenever it updates, the notifier will trigger a change and everywhere in our UI that we are listening for this change, we will get the notification. So at the moment, this is still exactly the same as value notifier. However, later on, we will see how nice this can be integrated with provider. Okay, so to continue, we would need to create uh, the constructor and call um, super and pass in the states. And the, we won't, won't actually um, pass in the states uh, within the constructor. We will instead just set it to be a default or an initial value of zero. And then we can create two methods, an increment method and a decrement method. And then in the decrements, we will say states and we will subtract from the states. And take note that this state is of type int. So at the moment, it's uh, just zero. And then uh, same, an in increment, we can just add to uh, the int value. And for the moment, that is all we need to do. So this is finished. So if we go back to main.dart, we need a way to inject this counter or to provide this counter for our application. So if we wanted to, we can create a counter and do it like this and create the counter over here. And we just need to import the package. Then we can use this counter in our application as normal as we would use a value notifier. So for example, in this counter, I can now um, say counter.increments. And if we wanted to, we can pass down this counter uh, to the body where we will finally display the, um, the value of the counter. And there is a method that allows you to um, listen to the uh, changes and it is called state notifier builder. 
And that is very similar to value builder or value listenable builder. So instead of creating it over here, we are going to provide it. So I'm going to wrap this in a widget and this will be a new provider and it is called state notifier provider. And we would need to import the flutter state notifier package. So this is very similar um, to normal providers. So the normal change notifier provider or normal provider. The only difference is, is that it actually exposes two different types. It exposes the state notifier and it also exposes the state notifier.state. So what this means is that not only are we going to be exposing the counter, but we will also be exposing the state of the counter, so the int value. Okay, so let's provide the function to create the counter. And there we go. Now this counter should be exposed to all of the descendant widgets of my app. So if we wanted to access it over here, we can use the normal provider magic to just get the counter. So um, we can use the extension method, so context.read to access the counter value. And on this, we will just call increment. And I'm not too sure why this is not working. I guess we need to import provider first. So let's just import provider and then we have access to the extension read method. And I'm just gonna copy this and put it over here. And in this one, we will decrement. And then finally in our body, what we're gonna do is we're gonna say context dot watch and we will watch for the int value because remember the state notifier provider provides the counter and the state of the counter so uh, the reason this is giving an error is because we need this to be a string because it's a text widget so now if we run our application and if we do a test we can see that plus uh, does what it should do and decrement does what it should do. And we're still printing these to do's, which is not necessary. So I'm just gonna remove that. And that is that for the beginning or for the first part of this uh, example. And as you can see, it's very, very simple to expose these states. And it's very convenient that we both get the state and the actual um, state notifier class as well. But this is a very simple example and it doesn't really provide any benefits at this point. So let's explore where we get the benefits by using state notifier. So as an example, let's imagine in our counter class, every time we change the state, we also want to change, uh, or we also want to save the value to the local storage. So um, for this, we would need to get access to uh, maybe the local storage service. So for example, um, we could, as an example, pass in the local storage service or whatever um, it is called. And then on this service or on this database, we can um, do the necessary uh, API calls to store the value. But instead of doing that, we can use um, a mixin called locator mixin. And this provides us with the ability to read and watch for other services, which allows us to use the read and watch provider method to access other objects. So as you can see over here, we have read and we also have something called update. So in this example, we are gonna use read. And like I said, that is just using provider to access a, another object that has already been provided. So let's create a new file. And this file we're gonna say is the local storage dot dot and we're going to create a abstract class and let's call it i local storage and this will have a future of void and then we can say uh, save the integer value 
and this will take in the key and it will take in the value. So we're not actually gonna create local storage or a local storage implementation. We're just gonna create a fake uh, local storage. So just as an example to show how you can access um, services in your state notifier classes. So let's implement the iLocal storage. And then let's create the overrides. And then over here, I'm just gonna print, and then we're gonna say saving the value to the key. And we can make this asynchronous. And then back in our main.dots, here where we provide the state notify provider, let's actually wrap this in a multi provider just to clean up the code. So this is exactly what we had before, but now we are also going to provide the local storage. So we're going to create a provider and then call create. And this will be the fake local storage. And then now this provider will return or will expose a fake local storage. So we just want to uh, make sure that this is the interface. So we're going to say iLocal storage. And now anywhere in our application, we can access the iLocal storage, which will give us the fake local storage. So if we go back to our counter, then as I said, every time the state changes, we want to save this into the uh, local storage. So what we are going to do is we are going to override the state uh, method. So every time the state changes, we want to save it to local storage as well. And to do that, we need to access the local storage. So we're going to use the read method and then we're going to say I local storage. And then on this, we will say save the integer and the key we will we can specify this as count and then the value and then one thing to take note of that is that at the moment um because we are overriding the state call if we for example uh, go to this increment and instead of saying increment we can actually access the state directly which is not something that we want to do we don't want to be able to set the state like this. So instead, um, we're just gonna make this protected. So we're just gonna add the protected flag. And now if we do a hot restart and we increment, we can see saving one to count and saving zero to count. And there you go. So a quick way to access our services or any other dependencies and all we had to do was provide the locator mixin. That is that for this video. Just a quick example showing how you can use state notifier. In the future, I'll be making more advanced videos showing how we can use state notifier in a uh, fully fledged application. As state notifier becomes very useful once we create our own classes and especially if we make use of unions. So if you do not want to miss that, make sure to subscribe and stay on the lookout for those videos. Something else we didn't take a look at in this video is how we can test our state notifiers. And fortunately, this is made very easy. So I do recommend you take a look at the documentation that provides examples on how to test your code. But in the future videos, I will definitely cover more of these examples. Thanks for watching and I'll see you in the next video. Cheers.